what we call the domino effect. That means that when you come and you live your purpose and you become successful and you become great, everybody who comes behind you, whether or not they work for it or they did not work for it, but there's a grace that follows them, there's a grace that comes on them, there's a grace that affects them, there's a grace that they did not even pray for, but because you are living in your purpose, you have what we call a domino effect. God we serve, the all-knowing God, all-powerful God, omnipresent God, the God who is everywhere and all at the same time. You know he's in the middle, right? And you know he's in the way too, right? Yeah. Okay. I want to greet everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to acknowledge our elders. We bless the Lord for you. We love you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. And I greet the leaders of the church this morning. I want to celebrate you and thank you for choosing to serve God. Mr. Yeah. Twyla, we celebrate you. We see you at the back. Amen. I want to celebrate our team, our worship team, our band. We love you and we appreciate what you are doing in the house of God. We love you. Amen. Amen. It's good to have you back, Prophet. You know, I mean, it's not the same Amen. without you. You know, I mean, it was great. last week, guys. How was your first Sunday back at church? Let's celebrate God is good. And all the time. Can, can we just remind each other what, what, what the sermon was? Because I mean, you said it's good, so I'm assuming you wouldn't know what it was. You know, just even just the title. You don't even have to tell me what it was. Just, just the title. That's it. Come on. Hmm. Can I get a louder amen? Amen. Yeah. We plan. We prepare. Yeah. And then we prophesy. Amen. We write it down. And then we say, God, establish it mm. in your fullness. Mm. And when we speak about planning, we speak about the work that we put in. As a Christian, we don't believe in magic. Yeah. We believe in the work. After you have worked, you are able to decree a thing so that a thing can be established. But you've written down the plan and God prepared you for the plan. And now when you begin to prophesy, we just decree a thing. A thing becomes established because you put in about your work and what's different from it being your purpose. Mm. Come on now. Realize about it. What is it that you have been born for? Yo. You serve, but what is it that speaks your name in your absence? Mm, mm, mm. My you work Do you know why? Because nobody wants to listen to a nobody. Yeah. Okay. People want to know who's going to address me. Yeah. Who's going to speak to me? What do they have? What did they study? What experience do they have? What have they acquired before I listen to them? So you have to put it away. Before you start prophesying, I believe I want to cry. Uh-uh. You put it away. Clear thing. Even the bed doesn't say no. It responds to your decree. It responds 
last week we were decreeing a thing yeah. and we we're reading from the book of Job. Yeah. Hallelujah. We remember that, right? You will make your prayer to him yeah. and he will hear your vows. You will decree a thing and that thing shall be established. You will speak things into existence and they will be in existence. You will pray when there's nothing and when you are done, there will be something. Anyway, today we're speaking about the purpose of God. My work is the plan. My ministry is my purpose. I'm making an example so that I bring it into context. I work you know I'm in the media industry. But it's very intentional what God is doing. That's just my work, but it's not my purpose. My purpose is the ministry of God. But I have to put in the words that when the ministry comes, it's the work that pushes me to my purpose. So I'm here to tell you, yes, you work, but what is your purpose? A purpose is what needs to be prophet. When you are not here, you must speak of the things that you've done. Your purpose needs to live on. But you have to live on. That's your purpose. Your purpose is not when you are established and you are brother and people. You are no. It's when you are born. There's a man who said and said, there used to be a young man who was happy for God. And he used to say, What a mighty God. We so he says, when he said that song, we experienced the mighty presence of God. They used to be a man. Oh, my God. A worshiper, an intercessor, but your legacy lives on, not from your plan, from your purpose. It's what we call a ripple effect. I want you to write this down. Number one, purpose lives on far after you have died. Your purpose lives far after you die. Number two, your purpose never serves you alone. Your purpose never serves you alone. Number three, your purpose is the key that unlocks destiny. But if I knew that I had the power to unlock destinies, I would have stepped into my purpose a long time ago. See, purpose doesn't serve you. That's why as you serve me, I can ask you, what has your ministry done for you? Okay. What has your ministry done for people? Yeah. 
That's why we do what we do. Even when it's hard. Even when it doesn't make sense. Because you are that generation. Not up to me. 
This is the business of God. So the same way you came in is the same way you're going to come out. There's another season that's coming in my life. Better than this season that I'm in. There's a better season of rain that I'm looking forward to. It's been cold for too long. And I have put a big to you for too long. But I did wear my jersey. I did wear my jester. I did wear my bottom neck. Because they come the time where I'm going to put you out. Yeah. 
You have to believe me when I say this. Your letter is greater than your past. If you forget the entire sermon, please believe me. Last year called a prophet. Where we are going? Where we are headed? Your problem you just now. Because you can't see tomorrow. God knew if you knew I'm going, you'd want to stand in front of me. So you don't even God. You don't know. Sometimes God even hides those mysteries to us. Even we don't know where we're going. But we trust and believe Ooh. that because we are locking destinies My God. and that we are a ripple effect of the things that we do and that we are living in our purpose. We know that our purpose will live. So, there's another term that I was doing my research. Proverbs 16.3 um, There's something called the domino effect. Can I get just two kids, three kids in front? The domino effect. Let me quickly read the scripture. Proverbs 6, 16.3 Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plan. There's nothing wrong with you planning. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you having the plans. But God says, bring the plans. After you've brought me the plans, I'm going to establish the plans. God, so I don't have to architect the house and then build it. Hmm. Hmm. You don't have to draw the plan to your house and build it. Okay. You just have to have the plan okay. mm. to your house. Mm. Okay. 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 You don't have to acquire the car that you want. You don't have to build it. That man, you don't have to build it. Just have the plan. God establishes the plan. Okay. You don't have to build that church. Present And 
you live your purpose and you become successful and you become great, everybody who comes behind you, whether or not they work for it or they did not work for it, but there's a grace that follows them, there's a grace that comes on them, there's a grace that affects them, there's a grace that they did not even pray for, but because you are living in your purpose, you have what we call the domino effect, where everybody gets affected. So I am here to prophesy for your family that because of you, because of your presence, because of your life, because of your prophecies, because of everything that you have done, your entire generation shall be accepted, shall be established. Woo. Because you refuse to work and you accept it yeah. to live within your purpose. My God. I'm closing. Isaiah 33, 6, I'm sitting down. It's my last scripture. Please write it down. Isaiah 33, 6. He will be the firm foundation. There's a song that says, when I'm because you are passionately white and black. God is my firm foundation. We're getting to Isaiah 33, 6. Maybe that I can. Isaiah 33, 6. He will be the firm foundation for the entire lives. Hey. Please listen to me carefully. Listen to me. He will be the firm foundation for their entire lives. He's going to be my firm foundation. He will give them.
So why will he fail now? Then let's go. He won. So why will he fail now? He won. Why did he fail now? Yes. Mm-hmm. 